Hello out there subscribers and friends, this is Surviving 2 coming at you with another video. Hello out there in YouTube land. Well I'm trying to make my lid for my uh, Swiss Volcano stove. And at first I thought I was going to have to take like a jigsaw, one of the old style that I've got. Uh, where the manual button turns on and it's not a trigger type and clamp it to the desk and cut this metal out well I just started messing with this and son of a gun it cuts it so what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut it all the rest of the way around and I'll probably Speed that up so I won't bore you to death. Now I'll kind of show you how I'm making this lid. All right. I've got it, the rough shape of it cut out. Now I've got to go back around and trim the smaller portion out. Oh, by the way, safety first. Safety first. Now I'll get uh, started on doing this. Okay, now that I've gone around it and cut the rough shape of it out, I can take and uh, file down the edges to get it smooth. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up. Let me get it up here. You can see I've got two lines marked. The outer line was my cut line. The inner line is going to be a bend line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and take a uh, did blow hammer and I'm going to put this against something and start bending this around to where my volcano stove it'll fit down over it and lip onto it so that, that way I can uh, have it seal down a little better. But what I did was I took the cup set it down on there, centered it as best I could. Oh, you can't see that, can you? <laughs> All right, took the cup, put it down on here, centered it as best I could, drew a circle, and then went in a bigger circle with uh, something else that was just a little bigger and made my second mark. So uh, that way I can cut it onto that mark and then have it lip up and onto the cup once I hit my bend. And I'll show you how to do my bend here in a minute. Uh, one thing I don't know if you were catching or not. When I was cutting with these, I had one handle down on the table. And I was literally just pushing down and not using my hand force that much to do the cutting. Saves you a lot of, a lot of pain, <laughs> let me tell you. So just put the handle down on there. This works on tin snips, works on a lot of stuff. Just sit there and just, and basically you're only using your thumb to pull it back up, but you're pushing down kind of with your hand. So anyway, just kind of a little tip there that I use on cutting stuff that's heavy, although this wasn't that bad. This was pretty easy to cut, as you see. I made short order of it. All right. I'll uh, get some other stuff ready and get back to you in a minute. Later. All right, as you can see, I've got, well, maybe you can't see. I'll zoom in a little bit there. There we go. Now I took a file there that you see, it's a rasp, and I rounded off this edge right in here and this point so that I can make uh, a place to hammer with and hammer on, kind of like an anvil. 
but it's going to be a lot softer to hammer on so that way it won't deform the metal so bad and I've already kind of started with the dead blow hammer you can see there I've already kind of started if you can see how flat that is now I'm not raising it much I'm just getting it started as I go around so that I can go ahead and roll it on over and I don't want to stress the metal a whole lot all at one time. So what I'm going to do is hopefully do this and I'll speed this section of the film up and we'll let you see what's going on as it starts taking shape. Okay, you guys kind of get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and stop this, but you can see if I can get it at an angle to where you can see. You can see that lip that's starting to form. And I just got to keep going at it slow. I don't want to go at it too fast. It would be a lot better if I had a full shop and a couple of, couple of things I know they make in them. And I don't know what the name of them are, but I know how to use them. <laughs> But anyway, I'll go ahead and continue on with this and get back with you after I get that uh, much of it done. Later. Well, I've been working on it. I've gotten it this far. And as you see, I've cut it about eight times around through there. Because what I was finding out is as I was bending this up, it would warp around back over here all I was doing pushing metal from one place to another and making it go flat so I had to create these little stress cuts what I call stress cuts and in order to give the metal room to expand or fold up into that area and I only cut it maybe a sixteenth of an inch at that and as you can see I cut it on a V so I'm going to get back after it. It's starting to take shape and starting to do pretty good. I just need to smooth it back out and bend it some more after making some more cuts. Because the first cut I did wasn't big enough. So I had to go back through and cut a little bit more. But let me work on it some more and I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm done out here. I'm done with all the pounding I can do. I've got it fairly well shapen. Now if you look close you can see where the metal kind of it dips down in here compared to where the stress joints are. Now, I'm gonna have to take a file to all these little edges and everything and smooth this thing out a little bit. It's pretty smooth right now as it is but still it's kind of rough and it's not exactly flat let me get the cup there's the cup and there's the lid on it so that'll be the lid for it holds it fairly tight not too bad a little loose but at least it's sitting down on there flat and once I put the little handle or something in it I'll be able to pick it up and I'll smooth it out it'll look a little better I'll show you more details later okay back in the shop now <laughs> shop I said I'm gonna take there's a dead blow hammer I was using I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it down on a flat file I've got this aluminum will cut pretty easy I don't want to don't want to go too fast so I'm gonna put it put single cut side up and then I'll just sit here 
and go along like that until I can get it all fairly smooth. Then I'll take and knock these rough edges down, smooth them out a little bit. That way it's a little smoother, won't be hanging on stuff. I don't know how many of you use files a lot. Get a wire brush. Because every now and then, let's see if this is in frame. You gotta take and clean out that uh, those grooves for the file. Helps a bunch. It's just like a brand new and you keep up on doing that and they work good for you. All right, well, let me get going on this thing and I'll get back to you. All right, well, I've taken the files. I took this flat file, uh, double cut one side, single cut the other. And I took this round file that's double cut only because I don't have a, a half round file. Uh, I said a round a minute ago, it's a half round. It's flat one side, half round the other. Anyway. I don't have a single cut, all I got is a double cut, but I've got it. You remember how it kind of looked like uh, an umbrella a minute ago with this side, the center kind of dipping down? Well, I got them pretty flat now, so that should work pretty good. I get everything smoothed out. I, I can handle it, no problems, no sharp edges, nothing like that. and. That works great. Okay, I've got my lid kind of made up. Now I need a handle for it. And I picked up a wooden handle, but it's a little big. I don't really like it. So I've got a screw chucked up in here in the drill, and I've got the handle screwed onto that. Now, what I'm going to do. And I'm going to fire it up, and then I'm going to take a rasp, and I'm going to start cutting it down a little bit so that uh, I can grip it a little better. And I'll let you kind of keep an eye on what's happening here, I guess, if y'all want to watch. You don't have to watch. I don't know whether you're able to see that or not. Just cutting it down pretty good. We'll continue on. This was the easiest way I could think of keeping it round or semi-round and cutting it down could have cut it down with the saw, but then again the saw, I'd have to try and get it round again. So this way, I can pretty much keep it round by doing this. It's bouncing so much, it's not keeping it round, but I'll straighten that out. There we go. Getting in pretty close. <coughs> As you can see, it's kind of off a little bit in areas, so I'm going to take it and hold it still and cut it down a little bit and then I'll get back to you. Alright, I've got it pretty round now. I mean it's got a little bit of a whoop in it but <laughs> hey, that's not bad. I can live with that. Maybe by the time I get done sanding it out, 
it might should do it should do a little better. I just gotta find the right sandpaper I want to use. There we go. Now then I had it down on low speed checking it out. Now I'll just take some hundred grit sandpaper. And go along and sand it, get it smoothed back out. Okay, now I'm going to take some 220 to it. Alright, I can see a couple of places where it's notched pretty deep. i got to go back in there with uh, 100, smoothing it out a little more. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. Alright, that works pretty good. And it's fairly straight. So that's a good thing. Now, all I got to do is take it and take some uh, sort of oil, uh, like a vegetable oil or something like that and put on it linseed oil uh, I think is okay but I want something that's uh, gonna oil it down soak into it and not be a hazard to me if I'm handling it with my fingers and it's uh, gonna be contacting food too all right I'll show you more when I get done later all right I took the little handle out of the drill and I've got a little bit of cooking oil here and what I'm going to do I'm going to take it just drop it down in there like that and let it sit there and soak up into that wood and I'll probably give it about an hour or so let it soak in there pretty good then I'll just wipe it off and uh, then I'll attach it back to the lid and I'll get back with you and show you what it looks like once I'm done. Well as you see I've got it finished and the oil soaked into it real well. It looked pretty nice really. <laughs> uh, for made got it screwed to it and it fits right on here. I've got a mark put on the top where I've got a groove cut in for the handle so that'll work pretty good right there uh, you know I could have gone out and bought another lid or found a lid maybe to fit this one but that's not what I'm really about I like making things I like doing things I like thinking for myself I like uh, overcoming things uh, in other words, that was a big lid. I made it into a smaller one. I like doing stuff like that. Well, the next video y'all will probably see will be the volcano stove. And let me get that in frame there a little more. Oh, that son of a gun's big. All right. Now, you know the last time I fired it up, I don't think, and I got a lot of comments about not getting enough air down in the bottom once the coals got going to keep the fire going good and I agree with that so what I've done is I've made a little grill I've raised it up just as high as the first level of holes so that way now when the fire 
gets going, I get coals down on here, whatever, I should still be able to get air through there. Hopefully. We'll see. That'll be in the next video. Alright, you guys. Until then. Later. I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more in the future that I put out, just subscribe. Until then, later.